Welcome to the new episode of Underground Trio here on Rauta. This time, once again, we have three different bands of three different styles, and this time they are all somewhat older uh, re releases and whatnot. Um, we have one band which is purely death metal, we have one band which is more like black trash, and then we have one trash metal band. And like I said, different styles, so maybe in that sense not so much comparable however according to my personal opinion these will be done in worst to best order so first we go ahead to russia with a band that is nowadays officially anyways on hold being since that like 2017 so can it really blame them for the current situation and whatever um so let's put those politics aside and all that stuff so Naka was founded something like 20 years ago and two albums out, the later one from 2014. And uh, this is very, very mediocre death metal. I'm gonna just split it out right away. So uh, those who are not really interested into something like electro, whatever it was, translated, uh, maybe not in for a treat so much, unless you're really having, uh, I don't know, soft spot for Russian death metal. Why I said especially Russian is that not only the language used is Russian, all the song titles in Russian, and also a lot of those spoken samples in the beginning of songs are Russian. So one could say that, whereas a lot of uh, dead metal bands, especially the American kind, are kind of bound to use some sort of uh, spoken samples from documentaries or movies or whatever, you know, just like serial killers and whatever, uh, for spoken parts, and sometimes they are just those cruel comments this is the kind of a Russian take on that. And obviously it just kind of a makes the overall feeling somewhat different because you really can like, oh shit, who is that crazy guy saying things like that? And then the actual songs start to play. Now, put those samples aside and then you're asking the question, so how is the music obviously? Because those samples are only, you know, just introductions to the songs and all that stuff. And I must say, they are very mediocre. While nothing is wrong with Naka's music as such, I mean, it's still basic death metal, not the most brutal kind, not the most melodic kind, just somewhere in the middle, so to say. We could say this is very, very traditional death metal, apart from being from Russia with the Russian take. And if you just kind of put that aside, you will find something very, very mediocre, very demo level recording with the second album. Now, all the songs are very listenable, be it about production or the vocals or just how the songs are structured, written, and so forth, you will find that this is something that you would say tolerable, listenable, and so forth. But nothing here is like, wow, these riffs or these songs are extraordinary, these are really good. Or, on the other hand, they are not like, what the hell is going on, these are super bad. Just something that you would just put on the background and kind of forget it's even playing after a couple of tracks. So something that you can basically tolerate if you can just handle death metal in the first place, but beyond that, nothing really is happening. So while this isn't bad outright or whatever, it's not something that you can really vouch for because there is nothing super interesting happening. So apart from the uh, Russian thing going on, which might be somewhat exotic, in terms of death metal, there is nothing really that should get your interest going on. I mean, if you are into Russian things, go check it out, but beyond that, not nothing too much interesting is happening. The second band comes from a place called El Salvador, or San Salvador being the location here, and uh, that alone is something some people might consider somewhat exotic, even though, of course, Latin America, South or Mid America is, of course, known for a lot of fat bands throughout the years, especially in the trashier side of things when it comes to extreme metal. This one is more on the black trash metal side and as such nothing new here, nothing phenomenal is happening with Witch Goat. Um, this is however quite mid in so many ways. Not exactly you know like lukewarm or totally forgettable but more like something needs to be done. I mean this is more like work in progress so I really can't understand why people are pra praising this like wait this is really good because in my opinion this a debut album called Egregores of the Black Faith, already from 2019, is definitely worth listening to, but 
Is it really? I mean, the thing here is, these guys know to handle how their riffs are done in the trashers and so things. They know how to incorporate a lot of black metal-y things. If you're thinking now, over noir from, you know, Norway, you're pretty much on the same page, except that this is more like a rehearsal version of that. Be it about production, be it about the vocals, be it the songwriting, once again, this is somewhere in the middle, like, not exactly good, but then again, better than pure mediocrity. And on the top of things, there are melodic parts which sometimes remind me of bands such as Dissection. This might be a little bit surprising how much trashier this is, indeed not being melodic black metal. So one could say this is on the melodic black metal side of things as well as the black trash things. And while that combination could really work for the favor of the band and, you know, like make the audience go wild and crazy, it's more like there are too many filler riffs you know, whole, uh, across the whole album. It's more like you kind of want to listen to it more, only to find out you're going to be a little bit disappointed. So one of those albums you kind of want to like a little bit more, but it's impossible because there are lots of lukewarm moments where you just feel like, can we just skip to the next track? I don't want to be mean, but in so many ways this is more like a classic logger which tries to be something different. So when you're looking for some, I don't know, craft beer, uh, experience and you're like yeah this is going to be magnificent done by a small brewery by some craftier fanatics so even though if it's kind of a lager beer you're gonna like it because hey it's after all not some mainstream big ass label making some lukewarm experience and then you end up like okay but it's still lager it's not gonna do fancy tricks or having super interesting you know aces up their sleeves be it catch riffs or memorable chorus parts or anything like that so, if you're like me, you like Oranor and the other bands operating in the Black Trash territory a lot, you still might have a hard time liking this one as much. So while it definitely has potential, it's still more like you're getting there eventually, but not with this album. So Egregores of the Black Faith is probably, depending on your view and like for the genre or these hybrid genres, um, might be definitely right up your alley. Just don't expect too much and you are good to go. So this falls in the middle with this episode of Underground Trio. And the best of the pile isn't really much better than that. But if I had to choose, which of course is the case with worst to best kind of a scenario, I would say Mofo from Brazil wins by an inch. Now this one is purely trash metal. So there's not like black metal elements going on at all. And this album made from, uh, I mean, coming out from 2020, uh, called Sick and Insane is definitely doing the very basic kind of things. This is hardly better than Witch Goat, and of course your focus is, like I said, more on the trasher side of things. So if you're looking for the next Sepultura thing, maybe you need to wait a little bit longer, because while these guys definitely have the thing going on, and much like Witch Goat, they have the potential to be really, really good, this album is still like, yeah, you're getting there eventually. I keep saying the same things because they both these both albums made me think the same way. They kind of have all it takes. Beat the vocals, beat the riffs, beat the style, beat the production, yet none of these are exactly like great. It's more like you get to enjoy these albums or bands to a certain degree. More like, yeah, I know where they're heading if only they were a little bit better in their game. And this is of course very typical for the first albums because Many times bands already have figured out what to do, how they want their albums to sound and what's the production like, what, the, what are the vocals like and etc. The list goes on. But they don't have all the tools, all the understanding and all that stuff. Not yet. There are bands which are just best with the debut albums and later on they just go and decline. But as common as that is... I mean, especially with the pioneers of any given genre, I could list a number of uh, Norwegian black metal bands that were basically doing that. So many bands actually do the opposite. It's more like the first album is the first version of the band, the second album improves a little bit, maybe the third and fourth albums are the ones that actually make a boom, head explode and all that stuff. And Mofo is on that page. I already can like smell the pattern getting better here. Like making the whole album more tight, more catchy, more impactful, and then making this modern trash metal legend or classic, I don't know what it will be, but it's almost like that is happening with this one. So well, definitely worth listening to, if you like, kind of a classic trash metal. Uh, still, still is not there yet, 
So no cigar, but definitely worth giving a shot if you are into the genre to begin with. So this being the worst to best in this underground trio, give these bands a chance or not, it's up to you of course and you will find links provided in the description box. So click and listen if you feel these are your things and if not, move on and wait for more reviews coming your way. Cheers from Spain and next time see you in Finland.